In this video, I wanna break down how you can use advanced prompting techniques to generate entire front-end components. It doesn't matter if you're in Vue.js, React, Svelte, or Solid, you can use these prompting techniques across every language, across any domain of front-end engineering. In this video, I'm gonna be using Vue.js. I'm using a basic Vite TS template. We're gonna create a carousel component. It's something that's a little more complex that you would likely look for a pre-built component to do for you. But with this prompt template I'm getting ready to show you, you can generate this component in a matter of minutes while maintaining full control over the implementation so you don't have to dig through and understand the documentation of a pre-built component. I'm gonna be using ChatGPT. First things first, I'm gonna generate a complete prompt that is going to help us build this component and many others. I'll speed through this so you don't have to sit through this. All right, so I've completed writing this prompt. Let me go ahead and drop this into GPT. While this is running, let's go ahead and break down exactly how this prompt works. So please ignore all spelling mistakes. I'm sure I made a couple in here. GPT will automatically correct those and assume what I meant. Let's dive into the individual prompting techniques I use in this prompt. This is a technique called role prompting. You tell the LLM the exact role you want it to play. Here I'm telling it, you're a senior Vue.js front-end engineer that mentored directly with Evan Yu, the creator of Vue.js. After you define the role, next you want to define a purpose. I'm telling the LLM you have a new project that requires you to build a new component. So now we're setting the stage. We have both a role and a purpose. Next, we're gonna define the requirements. I'm using a list-based format to define exactly what we want the LLM to accomplish when building the component as its role. Basically, you wanna be as verbose as you can, defining the functionality bullet point by bullet point. To recap what we've done so far, we're using the role technique, purpose technique, and now we're creating requirements as a list. The last two chunks I like to refer to as memory building. We're gonna give GPT two pieces of information it can use to help it complete its job. I'm giving it a function to navigate between the slides in the carousel. And then I'm saying, I'm letting GPT know I want it to use modern Vue 3 script setup syntax. And then I'm giving it an example of exactly what that looks like, specifically to accommodate for its cutoff date of September 2021. So to quickly recap, we gave it a role, we gave it a purpose, we gave it a list of requirements, and then we gave it two pieces of information to help build its memory. You can reuse the structure, you can template out both the memory portions, you can modify Vue.js to be any front-end language you want, and build any type of component that you need by replacing the requirements. So let's see how this prompt actually performed. We can see GPT finished, and all I'm gonna do here is copy the code and place it right in a brand new component. Without modifying it, we're gonna run it and see how it's done. I'm gonna replace the hello world component. All right, so we have a couple of mistakes. We're gonna go ahead and correct these. We tried to export this function, remove that and refresh. And as you can see, we have slide one and we have a previous and next button just as described in the prompt. As I try to click here, I can see that nothing's happening. That's okay, we don't expect it to work 100%, but we do expect it to get us 90% of the way. So let's just look around the component and see if we can figure out what's going on. Click events, looking good. Titles, we have the class. We do see that it's double nested in a component, which it does not need to be. And I already see uh, the issue here, we're missing some styles. So what I'm gonna do is merge these parent components together, get rid of the width, get rid of this outer container, apply a flex shrink to the slides. We can see that this is mostly working. Looks like we're getting a little off kilter here with our position sliding. Get rid of some of the CSS, awesome. When we take a deeper look at the previous next bu buttons here, we can see that we're going to the wrong pages. All right, so we've added disabled here on the previous and next buttons where they don't make sense. I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of the click events completely. Now we have a brand new carousel component. There are many ways to tweak this and to improve this, right? Like you can move these divs into separate components. You can take your position and set it to a concrete variable. 
so that you can iterate through a large number of pages, not just three. What we've seen here is that you can get a really concise piece of code generated from a single prompt. Again, we're not at the place where we're getting 100% accuracy on components that are a little more complex, but we are at a place where if you define and use a good prompt with several advanced prompting techniques, you're gonna get yourself 80 to 90% of the way there. I now have a mostly complete carousel component that I can use to start putting together a web application experience that is unique and that I have full control over and can change. Thanks to the help of prompt engineering techniques, the world of software engineering is changing. The future of software engineering is likely going to be LLM base. I think as you start prompt engineering and using it to write your front end code and code in general, you compose a series of prompts, which then represents an AI agent. And then you have AI agents that write code for you, that design, that help you run your business. And it all starts with understanding how you can write great prompts. Just to recap this one more time, we use four prompting techniques here. The role technique, purpose technique, list requirements, and then we built two pieces of memory. We then came in, inspected the result, and made a couple adjustments to the UI. And just like that, we now have a full page carousel component. AI-driven development is the future of software engineering. If you wanna see more content like this so that you can stay on the bleeding edge of what's possible, subscribe, like, and I'll see you guys in the next video.